Chair recognizes Mr. Conley of Cambridge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and through you to the members, I rise in support of amendment number three, which will strengthen and accelerate the special legislative commission included in section 13 of this bill to advance the concept of making childcare an allowable campaign expense for candidates for public office here in the Commonwealth. Now, this amendment and the underlying legislation that I filed with the gentle lady from Hull uh, to make campaign uh, expenses allowable for childcare is intended to move us closer toward a democratic process where everyone has a real shot at participation, particularly women who are parents and including any and all parents of young children who might otherwise not be able to consider running for public office. But before I continue, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to take a brief moment to reflect upon this, my first speech from the House floor. And I want to start by thanking you, Mr. Speaker, for opening your, your door to me and for graciously accepting input from myself and from members uh, throughout our body as we work to craft legislation here in the House chamber. My commitment to this work stems from my own personal background. I was raised in, in public housing in Norwood, Massachusetts. Public housing that I'll add was proudly built and fi financed by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And growing up as the kid of a single mom, I faced my share of challenges. I spent time in foster care when my mom got sick. I benefited from things like free lunch at school, fuel assistance at home, and a Head Start program where I had the opportunity to learn how to read and write uh, as, a, as a youngster. And despite facing some challenges, Mr. Speaker, with the help of a caring community, a loving family, coaches and other mentors, uh, and not to mention robust, fully funded public programs that supported me as a young kid. I was able to go on to college on a football scholarship, and from there I went to law school, became an attorney. I met and married the woman of my dreams, Casey, uh, who's watching this at home right now on video. Let's hear it for Casey. Thank you for that. And then I was fortunate enough to be elected to serve the people of Cambridge and Somerville here in this chamber. And what I learned along the way, Mr. Speaker, is that when we work together and we stick to our principles, anything is possible. And so I'd love to take a moment right here to just say thank you especially to the people of Cambridge and Somerville who've put their faith in me to represent them here in this chamber. And while it is true, Mr. Speaker, that I did face my share of challenges and adversity as a young kid, it's pretty plain to see, standing here today, that I also benefit from a number of societal privileges. At six feet, eight inches tall, not only am I a certified giant, but I also enjoy the privilege of being white, I enjoy the privilege of being male in a society that has always favored white men. So as someone who benefits from these privileges, I believe it is incumbent upon me to take every opportunity to use this position to advance the cause of equity. And that brings me to the amendment before us today. And I'll just like to briefly add what was already eloquently said by the gentlewoman from Hell. This is an amendment that is intended to open up our political process and make it more accessible to those who are ra raising young children, particularly all of the moms who would like to serve their community but may wonder if it's possible to fulfill all of the duties of being a parent and a candidate for elected office simultaneously. And while the provisions of this bill would apply to parents of all genders, we know parental care is disproportionately shouldered by mothers. This concept of making childcare an allowable campaign expense came to my attention from Lee Erica Palmer, a single mom and a member of the Somerville School Committee, who reached out to me and to other members of our Somerville delegation after noticing one of her male colleagues was able to rent a tuxedo to attend a political function using his campaign funds, while she, a single mom, wasn't sure if she would be able to attend the same function 
because of the challenges associated with securing affordable childcare. She reflected on the inequity of the situation and reached out to us to ask that we would work to make childcare an allowable campaign expense. Out of that situation, Mr. Speaker, real momentum has now gathered to advance this idea. I want to thank again the gentle lady from Hull for partnering with me on this topic. I particularly want to thank all of my Cambridge and Somerville colleagues who have all been supportive of bringing this idea forward. We filed uh, legislation to make campaign finance, to make childcare an, an allowable expense last session and we were grateful to see it reported favorably out of committee. I want to thank the gentleman from Watertown, uh, the gentleman from Boston, uh, as well as the director of the Office of Campaign and Political Finance who's worked closely with Rep Moschino and I and our staff to continue to advance this idea. I'm also proud to say that we've received support from the Massachusetts chapter of the National Organization for Women, the League of Women Voters, Parenting Journey, as well as the Massachusetts Commission on the Status of Women. Finally, I'll just add, if anyone's wondering if this concept is practical or feasible or necessary, I want to remind everyone that the Federal Election Commission ruled in May of last year to make childcare an allowable campaign expense. So in a sense, what we're doing today, Mr. Speaker, is taking one step forward with a provision that can help achieve gender-based equity and better working class representation in a way that our Federal Election Commission has already signed off on. So this is a simple common sense idea that we hope to advance today, one that I hope all of our colleagues will be proud to support. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.